How are you guys? It's been really, really long since we did a webinar. We have a full house right now. Um, there's a total of 100 people in here from uh, what I see. Um, no, you guys are considered basically the lucky ones. No one else can get in anymore. So the room is now full. Okay, so we're here in Kenya. Okay, where, where is everyone from? Where is everyone from? Where are you guys all located? Toronto, India, Dubai, Canada. Actually, for those of you guys who are in Canada, um, I'm going to be in Toronto with FX Street um, on, uh, I believe, Thursday and Friday of uh, in April, which is, I think, the 3rd and 4th of April. So if you guys are in the area, we can definitely catch up. Uh, for those of you who are in Toronto. Um, for those of you who are in Montreal, get in touch with me. I'm in Montreal right now. Okay, Sihag, Uzbekistan, Bangladesh. Uzbekistan, that's the first one. We've never had someone from Uzbekistan before. Great. Um, will you be coming to London anytime soon? Yeah, I'm actually going to be um, in Europe uh, in maybe May or June. I'm going to be in Europe. Uh, Singapore is on the list as well. So uh, I think in May or June, I'm going to be in Switzerland and uh, Munich and Frankfurt. Um, so these are the places. No, 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 uh, nothing. <coughs> uh, sorry, no uh, plans for Portugal yet. Okay, so uh, before we get started here, I uh, just wanted to show you guys, uh, you know, we have some general questions that come up all the time for um, for those of you who have any updates or, hey, by the way, how's everyone doing on the pound trade? Has, is everyone following along on the pound US dollar? Yeah, yeah. How, what's the, what's the status with that? Started moving up. Okay. Pip count. 45 pips. Okay. 35, 45. Okay. Okay. Good, good, good. Well, um, the analysis, I, I started to post them up on our Urban Forex group. So for those of you um, who do not know, if you just search for Urban Forex on your Facebook, this is our, obviously our logo and our Facebook page. We have all of our webinars and everything. All the information is going to be posted here, including our um, analysis. So uh, do do keep up with us and share your feedback. Um, the the second most common questions I get um, is basically how do I have MT4 on my Mac? So for that, if you you can go to blog.urbanforex.com. We have that on our blog. Um, we have the entire, uh, we have video and also written articles depending on how you guys like to follow up. Uh, so yeah, we have MP4 platforms for Mac. So that, that is the next question I wanted to solve with you guys. Okay, so let's get started here. Um, let me go back to Urban Forex because I need the indicator for pivot points. Forex strategies. Um, pro trading. Let me just download this pivot and we'll get started. There we go. Okay, how many of you guys use pivot points in your everyday, everyday, blah, 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 every day, every day trading? There we go. Yes, but confused with direction. I don't understand pivot points. Uh, yes, great for entry all the time. In combination with other strategies, it's gold. Okay. All right, so let's plot the pivot points up on my screen. So a couple things with pivot points. Um, okay. 
All right, a couple things with pivot points. Basically, for those of you who do not know what pivot points are, um, pivot points are, are basically mathematical averages of the previous day. Okay, here, I made it a little bit louder. Hopefully, that should help. Okay, so pivot points are basically mathematical averages of the previous day. Now, um, these are basically nothing but walls. Okay, walls and what we call support and resistance levels. Okay, so this is the current day. Okay, and basically this area here is like a barrier. I'm going to put a line right there where the markets are, are or should be struggling around here. There's a barrier down here. Okay, so this is for today. Now, there's a rule of thumb that I usually like to introduce into the market, um, which people don't usually use, but I think it's very, very critical to understand it. Whenever looking at pivot points, you look at three days worth of data, not just one single day. So if this is today, oh, sorry. If this is today, this is the previous business day, and this is the day before. So we're gonna use all of these lines to understand what the markets are trying to do. So you can see how the markets have stopped up here, but there's no line here for today, but there was one yesterday. Okay, so these support and resistance levels, when you combine them with three days, can give you a, a pretty strong area of where the markets may halt, okay? Everyone with me so far? Yeah, okay, good. All right, so let's get rid of these. Okay, now, couple of things that is very important to understand with pivot points. Pivot points are very, very, very powerful um, if used with multiple days. And they're basically support and resistance levels of, um, you know, they're, they're getting, basically this, this line that you see here is because an area that kept being used again and again on the previous day, okay? And it keeps getting plotted accordingly. Okay, um, I'll get you guys the link towards the end. Is the audio gone? One moment. Yeah. Is that better? Yeah. Sorry about that. I think uh, it, it crashed on my mobile device. It's okay. Okay. So, anyways, like I was saying, um, um, so the basically the, the the lines are basically support and resistance of all all the basically. Um, support and resistance of the previous day, okay? So when you use three business days, you get enough lines to give you enough data of how to work with the, with the market. Uh-oh, the voice is not good now. I, uh, one second, okay, one second, one moment. I... All right, uh, that should be a lot better. Okay, anyways, um, if there's any problems, uh, it, it, you won't see any problems on in the recording just in case. Um, but here we go. So <clears throat> getting back to our original thing. So yeah, three days worth of data give you enough, uh, uh, enough information to look at. Now, using pivot points is very, very critical to understand how strong an area is. Now, 
Take a look here. Would you say this is an important area? Okay. Now, just because there's no line there, it doesn't mean you ignore it. Okay. The, this is the highest point it went yesterday, and after that, look at the look at the how how deep the market has dropped. Okay, I'm not concerned about how many pips that is. The only thing that, that sticks out to me is that it's moved more than the average from this area. Okay, that's my concern. It's not a concern of, oh, it's 500 pips. That means a lot. No. It's, is it doing something different from normal? Okay, so you, under, you look at the area of where the main... Uh, uh, main drops and rises happen and you start to understand hmm do I have any significance in that area from before okay so now from this area I start to look at all the information I know I see an area here and here from before that is very related to this area okay it doesn't have to be exact so but we don't have a line here but we did have a line on the third day right around here Okay, so when you look at all the stuff, it's like you're looking at this as what if the market comes back to this area and starts to react again? Okay, so I'm not concerned that it has to react pinpoint to over here. Why? Because 99% of majority of the people are trying to sell this as a double top. My whole concern is I'm going to start to get interested in this area once I start to see a reaction from my candles. Once they start showing me some sort of reaction, that means sellers are coming back. Until then, I'm not going to just blindly sell it here because that makes no logical sense. It's like selling into the face of these buyers. Why would you do that? You know? So there's no. So always use some sort of logic in terms of how how the majority of people are thinking versus how you should you are going to um, go about trading all right okay so the market moves a little bit higher it uses these two lines okay makes sense bounces off of those lines and then drops yeah for for those of you who don't know the pair it's on the top left here it's got a new zealand cad Okay, so let's take a look at any other random pair. Let's uh, let's go to, for example, let's look at our pound dollar, the one that uh, everyone is trading right now. Okay, this is something we're interested in as well. There we go. Here's pound dollar. Now, pound dollar around here is when I made my call for a sell. Now, why do you think I said the markets are going to sell there? Why, why didn't I say it much, much before here? It's the same area, but why not here? And this right when this big candle reached this area. Okay, it's a good area. It's, it's reacted by pivot points. Plus, we have a line up here. So I know this area up here is quite strong. Okay. My, my question to you guys is in my analysis, why am I, why did I do this three hours later? Did I say it looks like a good sell? Okay, a lot of buying strength, railway track, huge pressure. Okay, now you see all the responses that are coming in. The responses are coming in based on education. Okay, forget education for a moment. Think extremely logic logically. The market moves up very, very strongly. Okay, if it moves up very, very strongly, why sell? That's a beast flying north. I'm not selling in the face of that beast. There's no way. Next, it tried to go down once. Tried to go up again. Now this time, when it tried to go up again, 
it's a hell of a lot smaller than when this big thing came up. It tried again to go down. It tried again to go up. This time when it went up, it started to create big, big tails on top. Now it's actually telling me the sellers are coming in. They're getting, they're getting uh, interested in this trade. And that's when the sell formation came out is that I know that this is a location. Yes, I get that. You know, everybody gets that. 900 million people out there get that, that once it reaches here, we need to sell. Fact is, majority of the people they sell here, they get stopped up. They sell, they get stopped up. They sell because they're going for location and not logic. Okay, so repeat after me, no location. Okay, no location, stop location trading. Okay, so once your location is reached, wait for something to happen. And if something does happen, then get interested. So there is no rush, there is no need for trigger fingers. This took five hours to get ready. Five hours is plenty of time to sit back, put your feet on the table and think slowly and carefully. There's no rush needed. Okay. All right. So let's, uh, let's move on to uh, another pair. Any, any pair that you guys like to watch? Okay. US dollar Japanese yen. Let's take a look at US dollar Japanese yen. Okay, here's USD Japanese yen. Let's let the page load. Give me a moment. We'll and we'll we'll go through we'll go through this list. Don't worry. Um, let's just let this load first. Okay. Here's here's what it here's now. Blah, 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 blah. It's loaded now. Okay. Everyone, stop typing. Focus. Focus. What I have to say. Now, <coughs> take a look at here. So first things first. Pivot points are plotted, and I am interested in three days worth of data. Okay. I'm starting my day with this information. Okay. That is just the very basic, the very beginning of what I'm doing. These are all these lines on all these three days are important to me. Okay. All right. Now, next thing that I'm looking at is what do I see? I see this area here where the markets have dropped down very, very strongly in the past, in the past meaning yesterday. Okay. And now from today, what I see the markets have risen up. Now did what happened here? Who can tell me after this move up happened? What happened? Stop losses taken, resistance, resistance hit. Okay, so here, let me plot a line here and say, okay, just hindsight, yes, this is an area, obviously, and everyone might be like, yeah, but Naveen, it already happened. If you can al already see it, you know, what's the point? No, it's that's not what I'm trying to point out here. What I'm trying to show you guys is, yes, it stopped from here, and then what did it do? It came down and did what? Okay, um, exhaustion, it got exhausted or whatever you want to call it. But what I see is the market died. It came down and it died. So if I were to put circles on this area, from what I see, I see a low and I see a higher low and the markets went up again. Now this time it went above my highest point that I had gone before. We're in an uptrend here. Now, now that we're going up uh, higher than this area, I noticed that yesterday we had this big monster begin from here. Now here is where everybody is going to sell. But where are my lines 
at or around this area. Three days, I have a line here, I have a line here, and at the very extreme, I have one slightly above that. This area to me is now strong because it's in relation to yesterday's massive drop. Does that make sense? Is, is everyone following along? Okay, so I know the highs are getting higher and it's, and it's trying to fly higher, but then I also see as we're getting higher, I have this big, strong seller that was sitting here before. Let's just say he's one seller. Let's say it's Warren Buffett just sitting there waiting for you to buy so he can sell it, okay? Whatever face you wanna give that seller, it doesn't matter. But here's, here's how you approach the situation, okay? Let me remove all this. Okay, so how you approach the situation is like this. The market moves up to here. It goes up strong in a green candle, red candle. It goes up strong again in a green candle. And now we are at this area. So what do I do? Do I sell? No. Let... 80, 90% of the traders are gonna sell here. They're location traders. So what's gonna happen? All their stop losses are gonna get taken out. Okay, yeah, you wait for price action. You wait for the market to tell you that this is an area that sellers are interested. And how do we see that? Is once at this line or around these lines, you start to see reactions happening. And that reaction tells you it's time. The sellers are coming back. Okay. Does that, does that make sense? Everyone with me? Okay. Now, same thing after the drop, the, the drop that's happening right now. Okay. Let's uh, delete this. Okay, I'm deleting all this and I'm gonna to explain to you the drop after that. So, so the market comes here and you're ready to sell. Now, the first question that comes to everybody's not mind is if I'm selling, where am I selling to? It's a blind thing. It's, it's, it's just, it's hardwired in everyone to think location, location, location. You know, maybe it's coming from real estate and everyone's buying houses based on location, location, location and re retail stores, but in Forex, it's not necessarily location, it's the price itself. Let the price tell you what it's trying to do. So you see this massive move down happening. In your mind, you know that the big buyers pushed it up from here earlier today. They pushed it up here earlier today, not to mention it made a higher high, okay? It made a higher high and it pushed it up. So you know that buyers have some money. Okay, they have some money, they have some power. So then as the markets are coming down, around this area, what lines do you see? Tell me all the pivot lines that you notice. Around this area, this area here, where the buyer started, we have a line yesterday right there. Three days ago, we have a line right there. And today we have a line here. So now that the markets are coming down, I know somewhere in this area, there is value. There is importance here because the big buyer shot up from here and I'm taking all the lines around this area where these big buyers are because in this area is where we're gonna get some sort of reaction. It ha it's not never, never going to be pinpoint because every broker, the prices are different and plus stop hunting needs to happen. So it will never be exact pinpoint and then take off. You know, that's just saying, feed me from a spoon, you know, and there wouldn't be billionaires and then everyone losing money. There would simply be everyone making money and that makes no sense. Okay. 
All right, so once that happens, now, why do you think it's not flying north? Let's use a little bit of logic now. Why is it not flying? It, did, it is going up. There is some pips to be made, but why is it not flying? Okay, Greg, very good. Big seller earlier. Very, very good. Okay, what else? What else can you guys talk? Tell me about. Forget all the education. Think logic. Okay, it's tired. Okay, Accu and forget. I, I I don't want to even get into vocabulary. Accumulation, distribution, none of that stuff. There are still sellers left. Okay. Time zone. No, time zone has nothing to do with it. Bearish sentiment for the last three days. No, 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 no. Okay. All right. So let's, 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 let's go into this. It's good. Whoever tried has more points from me than those who don't try. Because people who try, even if they're wrong, they will, ex they will succeed faster. All right. So here's how I look at this. Take a look here. How many of you guys know Fibonacci? Not personally, but, uh, how many of you guys know what how the Fibonacci retracements work? Yeah? Okay. So Fibonacci said one thing. Basically, nothing can go in a straight line without retracing. Okay? So which means if something is going up like this, it must come down 28 or 38 or whatever those numbers are or 50% before going correct that's the apps that's the general basic of um the fibonacci sequence so if something is on its way up and it comes down it will continue up again something like that but it won't be a straight one shot okay so if you guys understand this logic now which is a mathematical sequence of the universe understand this when the market went up here, how much percentage do you think this is of a retracement? Okay, 50, some people say 60. Okay, whatever the number that you guys think of, 50 or 60. Now think logic again. Forget the number 50, forget the number 60, forget any number. All you know, it's pulled back somewhere halfway and then it went up again. What does that tell you about the strength the buyers have? That means buyers have money. They're not letting the sellers through. The sellers tried to come down, but then they came down only maybe halfway and the buyers kicked them back up. Now the second time it went up, what can you tell me about the retracement after the second upward movement? Here's the movement it made the second time up. After that, when it retraced down, how far did it come down? 100%. So who do you think has the money now? The buyers or the sellers? Sellers, that's why when you buy after this, you're getting very little movement. It's because the sellers are taking over. They're basically telling you, hey, whatever your buyers did, we can match that. We can do better. So the chances are this thing is going to rise a little bit. Maybe go till here where we have another line and possibly drop, giving you a lower high because our previous high was up here you see how we, we went we didn't focus on any educational nonsense that's published on the internet we we put logic we were trying to understand what the market is showing us everyone with me Okay, good. 
let's take a look at another example and you guys will, will start to see it. If we do two, three examples like this, you guys will really start to see everything again and again and again, you know? Repetition is key. All right, so let's um, do another pair. Which other pair that you guys wanted? You guys wanted uh, what, Euro, USD and all that stuff? Let me go back up where you guys had all the lists. I think it was Euro, USD, I don't remember, but. Um, Euro USD, NU, Aussie dollar. Okay, let's take a look at New Zealand. I see two, three New Zealands in there. Okay, let's. Okay, it's the same person. Okay, we can, we can take a look at New Zealand. That's fine. Bill Gates wants New Zealand. That's what Bill Gates is gonna get. All right. There we go. Okay, let it load. Okay, now New Zealand, previous data, we have nothing to work with. We don't know where the strong buyers and sellers are and all that stuff. We can scroll back and look further back. You know, we can go and look back from the four hours and see, okay, where is all the buyers and sellers? It's making new highs, new lows. I would, in the new highs, new lows, the only logic you can use is the strength to continue. Now, what, I, what do I mean by a strength to continue? Look here, a strong move up happens from here, correct? Strong move up happens from here, it goes and goes and goes and goes and goes until it reaches R3 of today, okay? This area up here, okay? Once it reaches all the way up until here, look at the retracement that comes down. What kind of percentage would you say that is? Very small. It's a 23%, 10%, whatever you want to call it. It's a small movement. That means this move still has power to go long. Now, when it tried to go long, it's struggling here. Again, it only got slightly higher and now it's being choppy sideways. That's telling you we've hit a wall, we've hit some sort of wall. Now what we need to see is if this is going to fall and challenge these buyers. If we fall and challenge these buyers, the game is starting to change. Does that make sense? Okay, so there's not really much data we can work with on this one. Um, you know, there is a way to still find out, but I think for the sake of this webinar, uh, we're not gonna look at this pair, we'll look at a different pair so we have something to compare to the left. Okay, now, um, you guys wanted Euro USD. Let's take a look at Euro USD. Then we can move on to Aussie dollar. I think some of you guys wanted Aussie dollar as well. All right. Here we go, Euro USD. Okay, first things first, three days. I'm gonna mark it so I know which are my three days. I have one, two, and three, voila. Okay, three days. Now, let me start to look for areas that have uh, some strength, okay? Hmm, got an area here. I got an area here where the buyers shoot from every time. Okay, what else do we have? I have a small seller here. I have a very nice seller here. Okay, so now first things first, which direction is the trend? Okay, down. Why do you say down? Lower highs, very good. Lower tops, good, good. And lower lows. Okay, 
So we're, we're using some sort of understanding of how it's going down. If you ever have a confusion which way the markets are going, bring in a kid into your room and be like, look at the charts, tell me which way it's going. He will not think of any educational bullshit and he will tell you directly, it's going down, it's going up, that's it. So a best way to do it is look at the charts like a kid. Okay, so the markets are headed down here. We can see the flow going down. All right, now, now that the flow is going down, do you, do you notice one thing is every time it goes down, like here or here, it drops like a brick. But when it retraces, it has such a hard time to retrace. Look, after it dropped here, look at the way it retraced up. It's like green candle, red candle, green candle, red candle. Like it's, it's having such a hard time going up, but it has such a smooth time coming down. It's all red candles. This is, is basically telling you that, that there is selling pressure. Okay? When, when you have a strong move coming down and then a struggle to go up, that's telling you somewhere here this thing is going to smack it down again. Does that make sense? Everyone with me? Okay. So, when I see this, that the markets have gone down very, very strong, they've come to this area, we see some sort of reaction, and it's starting to go up. Okay, do I want to buy this thing? Okay, no. You don't want to buy you don't want to buy stuff like this. It's counter trend and if it makes you help uh, makes you remember something, counter trend is counterproductive. Think of it that way. Okay? You're going to have to end up sitting through a big mess for a long time. All right, so what happens is once the market starts to go up, now I want to see, I, I know that the markets have moved down very strongly, and I in my mind, I have the Fibonacci numbers. I have, okay, 38%, maybe 50% is going to be somewhere here, 60% somewhere here. Okay, whatever it is, I, I have some sort of understanding of in this area that it can retrace to. Now, I want to see if it struggles up to the retrace. I am not concerned of location that if it touches 50%, I'm going to hit the sell button and then we're going to go buy a Ferrari. No, it doesn't work like that. I'm going to see the struggle on its way up. That struggle is very important to me. Okay, and it takes time to go up. You can see that it's red, then green, then red, then green. Like it's, it's having a hard time getting up there. Now, as it's getting up there, I started to notice what lines do I have for my pivot points that are inside this area of downtrend. I have one there, I have one here, and I have one here. This area to me is now powerful. Okay, as the market struggle to get up into this area, and I start to see the markets getting higher and higher and higher and then drops lower. That is very interesting to me because that tells me it's time. Take a look. Look very closely at the bodies. Look very closely at the bodies. I can actually draw a trend line. Right? And then what happens on this last red candle? It stops going higher, it pushes through. Once it pushes through, does it mean, oh my God, I need to sell right now? No, it comes back to pick you up. At that same area, and then it falls. There's never a rush in the Forex market, okay? 
And the people who rush in basically give us the money. Okay, there's never a rush. There's no such thing as it blasts and it just flies away and then you just lost 500 pips. It doesn't happen like that. It will always tell you before it's going. Okay, so does everyone understand how this trade could have been caught um, maybe four hours ago for a sell? Okay, we're using all of this logic together with these pivot point lines and pivot points are very, very powerful. If you use them with three days, it's extremely powerful. Okay, all right guys, um, uh, the time is coming up for the webinar. Any, any questions, any questions? Let's go through any last minute questions um, before we close the webinar in the next five minutes. On which candle do we need to sell? On the candle that shows you that it, it's trying to go beyond. Uh, Linda Martin, please, can we get the pivot points? Yeah, the pivot points are found on the site. Okay. Um, whoa, oh, yeah, I'm trying to find out where I was. Okay, what stop loss or profit ratios do you use? Okay, when the trade is basically trying to go in your way, there's no, you don't have to worry about recent highs, 30 pips strict number, none of that stuff because the trade is getting to go. So your stop loss is basically a formality at that point. Okay, because you're entering at the moment the markets are telling you they're going to leave. So the chances of the market coming back is little to none. If it does come back, tough luck, you got stopped out, enter again. If you have a good risk to reward, Regardless, you'll make you'll make your money in the same moment regardless. Okay, how can you configure pivot points for higher time frames? Uh, you cannot. Pivot points are made for daily use. So it works, um, it's easier to see it on the one hour chart and below usually. The moment you go on to four hours, it becomes a mess like this. Because on the four hour charts, you have only six candles to represent one day. So there are some things called weekly pivot points, but uh, I don't use weekly pivot points. Okay, does this work for scalping too? Um, I'm sure it does, but uh, I don't, I don't, I personally don't like to waste my time scalping. Um, you know, and studying and really doing all my homework analysis for five pips. Yeah. No way it's getting my money for five pips. Okay, how to ride a trade for maximum profit? Well, as this thing starts to go down, for example, if you entered where I have my red arrow, as it starts to go down, it goes beyond this line, it goes lower and lower and lower, and then you see a reaction. Okay, so it all depends on how you're seeing the flow come down. If the flow is smooth, you're okay. You can target the next areas. But if it starts to react, it's time to exit. The strong move down is over. Can you take profit at uh, the next pivot point? Yes, you can, but uh, um, for example, take a look at this one. Now, if you were to take profit at the next pivot point, you miss all the second pivot point movement when it moves so smoothly. The thing is that because of location, people get scared here and they close. Okay, and what it does, it, it, it bounced up and down here for a little bit, but the candles are still red. They continued down all the way to here. So that's extra pips that's, that can be taken. If you trade seven pairs, how do you divide the risk? Uh, you you basically divide the risk based on your stop loss. Okay, um, and if you're trading seven pairs, chances are you cannot use a stop loss. You have to use equity risk management. Okay, if pivot points align very closely, no trade. 
um, or wait. Uh, Greg, not necessarily. If they align closely, I think it's a it's a strong area actually. I would look I would look around for the last three, five, six days and see why is my pivot points so tight in a certain area? What happened in the past in that in that price range? Chances are something took off from there. Okay, uh, Omar, which time which time frame these pivot works best on uh, one hour? Sunil, will you have a correlation webinar for pivots? Uh, no correlation anytime soon. Uh, I think correlation is still a strong topic for most of you guys. Um, the moment logic comes into play, correlation will make sense. Until then, correlation cannot be used as a strategy where A plus B is equal to C. No one's going to understand anything. So that, that will be like one of my worst webinars. People are going to just end up leaving because they don't understand anything. So I, I can't do a correlation webinar yet. Um, could, uh, where we go? Will the webinar be available on YouTube? Yes, nothing. It will be. I'm going to, it's, it's recorded. I'm just going to confirm that. It is recorded and it will be on YouTube in the next 24 hours. Okay. Um, can you use a similar setup with pivot points on TOS? What do you mean by TOS? Okay, no, are you using correlation or no? Yes, I do use correlation. Correlation is um, very important to me. Uh, Said, for this strategy, what I just discussed in this webinar, it's gonna be on our forums. When you go to uh, Urban Forex and you go to the main page, um, here is where we have trade analysis and one of them is gonna be labeled webinar and pivot points, which is gonna have the recording. And in there, I will also have a discussion of examples and uh, the things we discussed in the webinar. So it'll be a good place to um, review uh, and stuff like that. Okay, can this pivot work on all trade trading stations? No, this is this pivot point indicator was made for uh, MetaTrader, but. Uh, um, Every every trading station platform has pivot points anyways. Otherwise, you can manually plot them. There's many pivot point calculators out there where you can get these numbers manually and you can just, just draw them manually on your charts. That also can be done. Okay, um, so that is it for today, guys. It is 2.51 p.m. on my time. Um, and I really appreciate all of you guys taking time out to come here. Hopefully this was useful. Uh, the recording will be available in 24 hours. Until next week, we'll have the next webinar. Um, follow us on our group on Facebook. And uh, see you all next week. Hopefully you guys can get in early enough. Um, for those of you who didn't get in early this time. So the room, get, cause the room gets full. So take care guys. Have a wonderful day. Bye for now.